not either. Are we? <laughs> I'm not seeing a selection to start recording. Now we're, now we're recording. Ah, I started sorry. the recording. Sorry, I I should I forgot about it on the start. No, I haven't been taking notes yet. <clears throat> okay, so let let me uh, repeat my observation with the OMA Ipso ID um, extension. Uh, so we, we have an extension, OMA colon ID, uh, here that, that carries a number, uh, but we we don't have a way to uh, put in a meta model that would tell us what these um, extensions are supposed to be. So if, if uh, I said OMA ID to, to Hugo, then, um, yeah, there, there's nothing stopping me from doing that. Right. My th my thought on that was that in the namespace, you would have to have a definition for those extension points. And so you at the top level, you'd have SDF data, SDF thing, SDF object, and then you'd have these descriptions that would be schema. Each one would, I, I think you could get away with the schema. I don't see why a schema is, why you would need more than a schema to describe an extension point. It, it would just be like an SDF, a fragment of, you know, fragment of JSON schema plus SDF or whatever. But I, and I tried a couple of simple ones and it seemed to make sense. I think they're in that example I made for the web of things um, thing up back back in last year. But isn't that what isn't that what the current thinking is? Is that it would need to point to a schema. Well actually we haven't actually talked about what should the namespace point to, but um schema would be one Definitely useful. Or right. maybe to find I had SDF definition and not schema. Maybe we could use more of SDF in that also. Mm. Yeah, maybe because right, I, I don't think we haven't we haven't actually talked about at all what should that uh, namespace URL point to. We should have that discussion, of course, soon too. Um, so, Karsten, one one idea I was thinking on on the meta model, like would it be feasible with toolings and formats? For example, have an additional CDL definition that you could merge with the um, base CDL that together then could, you know, have like also that kind of features um, validated. Is that feasible? Yes. So we we, we could uh, uh, provide sockets in the CDL definition where additional CDL definitions could plug in just. What about a, a new top level construct called SDF extension that where you you used SDF language to define these? You would have pretty much all the would would you have enough um, um, constraint um, co coverage? Would you have enough you know richness? Expressive power. Yeah, right. Expression exactly. Would you have enough expressive power with SDF language to to define these extension points? Because if they're just numbers or structures or something like structs or strings or something like that, it seems like you could. So anyway, I guess those are the those are a couple of options. I I kind of thought about both options, and I thought it would be hard to extend the schema because you'd have to bring another language in to do that. And I thought it would be better if we could try to use SDF. Mm. So you, you, you mean that um, wherever you would like to have extensions, you make a new, S, new uh, block called SDF extension and on, yeah. inside that you put the extension things. Yeah. I think that name it, do name it. So you would have SDF extension. So I have an example of this. I just can't, I'm, I'm poking around. I can't lay my hands on it. It's in the W3C thing. You have a thing, uh, an SDF extension and in that you, you have the term. So SDF extension just works just like SDF data or whatever. And you put those terms in and then you, um, you are able, now, of course, you'd have to use that SDF ref and point to it um, when you define mm -hmm. something. But um, it, that seemed to work also, I think, from my recollection. I didn't do it that way in this prototype, but I could probably go refactor things and see how that would work out. It, it seems like it would be pretty much equivalent. Because if you use SDF pointer, I know approaches, if you have an SDF pointer to something, you can go get it and, and merge it in and 
and use it, right? So um, if we keep SDF working that way, that's a huge convenience for, you know, if you don't have to do any special filtering or whatever, that, that basically if you use SDF pointer to, to bring in the extensions the same way you use it to bring in a piece of data or whatever. Hmm. We still would need to distinguish the meta level from the meta meta level. Um, well, SDF extension does that. It's just the term, right? I guess. I guess there is a. So you're saying that putting it at that level makes it look like it's an affordance. Well, <clears throat> I don't know. We, we just need a way to do that, and um, yeah. Yeah. also, um, if you look at the the data qualities that we currently have. Uh, which includes some some JSON schema uh, keywords. These are really meant for describing elements of of an affordance. They are not um, laid out yet for describing um, descriptions of such elements. So, for instance, you couldn't say uh, here's something that that needs to be um, a set of data qualities. Um, because it, it's not describing the 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 actual level of the affordance interaction, but the meta level uh, for that. So that that's a little difficulty I I have here with just trying to define the um, extension itself in terms of uh, what modeling capabilities we have at the SDF level. I'm not sure I understand the problem. So imagine that in this example, Omer ID wasn't supposed to be <clears throat> a, a number, uh, but a definition of some data qualities. Okay. That's like, like I'm doing using SDF data, essentially. Uh, semantically, it's equivalent, right? So, Car Karsten, would it oh, be similar? I, I you have to define what. Well, you, so we can. You know, I, I'm still not following. Go ahead, Adi. <laughs> so, Car Karsten, because I mean, now, now you, in the example, you have two OMA IDs. Yes. One is an ID of the object, and second one is the ID of the property uh, yes. called sensor value. Is it the second kind that you're now talking about? Because it's that kind of a additional qualities for, I mean, it's additional qualities for a property, but it's very similar to additional qualities for a data. So I would like to be able to say somewhere that uh, when you add an OMA ID to an SDF object, it has to be a number that starts with three. And if yes. I add an OMA ID to, to a property, then it starts with a five. Mm -hmm. Where do I put that? Mm -hmm. So well, you create that's two not... extension points, one for object ID and one for property ID, and you provide strengths for them. So I put the object ID in my definition of object, my generic definition for templates of all objects, and then I would put property ID in the, uh, extend the def template for resource, the definitions for all resources. Then when I constructed one, I'd go grab the object ID one, and it would have the constraint about the, the first digit has to start with three. And when I collected the resource con, uh, ID, I would get the other constraint. I mean, at least functionally, right? I'm, I'm not seeing where well, the problem would be there, because I can provide a different constraint. As long as I have access to the data qualities, which is why I chose data, by the way, because it seemed to be the most the thing that aligned most with the actual constraints I wanted at that place. So, SDF extension could have data qualities as its range and function in this way. Unless I'm missing something. Yeah, the, the 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 we have a way to put these data qualities somewhere. What we don't have is a way to say, by the way, if you find an OMA ID quality in an SDF object, 
it's controlled by this SDF data definition. Well, that's why we have to have an OMA object quality and an OMA resource ID quality as two separate qualities because they have to have a different constraint. We don't have context sensitive constraints. We only do them by by what's what you find at the pointer. Maybe the maybe we're still not that's, that's true, on yeah. the same page here, but uh, so in the processing of these things, you when you need some more constraints, you follow a pointer and you sort of look at the things you find there and you apply those constraints. And if you have something like constant, then you know you're done. That there are no more constraints that can override that. So you should be able to do everything, and in, including say, I have I have an ID that I just want to define in the schema as a constant each time. To to say that I have a fully resolved definition, then I can make an instance from it. I need to have all these things nailed down. I need to have a default or an override by the application uh, to to. Say that. And so either in that sense, either way, you could you could basically make a definition that that set. Maybe I'm talking about some different something different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I think the, the observation about context, context, context sensitivity here is uh, relevant. Mm -hmm. So you you couldn't call both of them OMA ID if you couldn't. If you they, couldn't. They have them. if they have different ranges. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so. Solution well, you could, here you would could be have a different pointer to them. They could be OMA ID on a, along a different path, but that would not be a very good design practice, probably. It, because normally, when you when you have the context of you know what I mean, the path it could include the context of where the definition is. So you could have, you could have a, a thing where you said OMA resource ID and then OMA ID OMA ID under that with a constraint, and then, you know what I mean. If you defined the OMA ID, if the definition was within the definition of object, but that would be kind of, I don't know. See what I mean? You could, you could have OMA object templates, and then you could have an OMA ID definition there with one set of constraints, and then you could have an OMA resource template and an OMA ID in that one with a different set of, with a different range. And then when you made a JSON pointer to the object one, you'd get the object constraint. And when you made a JSON pointer to the resource one, you get the resource constraint. So I guess you could still use the same term, the same string for the term. Because the JSON pointer would distinguish the, the range that you would have a different definition. And that's that's what you do when you set them with a constant anyway, right? If you think about like the singleton pattern where you just say I have a model that has a constant value, so it's a one class of one member of one. That's kind of what kind of a related pattern where you say each each definition has this property, but then it's it just has a different value, and so the range of the constraint is sort of just like a proper a value of a property or something like that. It really is just a value. Yeah, in terms of the processing, you just get the value and it happens to have a range constraint for the for the real value that you're applying to the model. So that's the reification. That's what it does. It, it grabs the range constraint from the node and sticks a value in, in, the, in the result at that point. So does this get us closer to figuring out how to handle this? I, I think, you know, I guess if we have extension points, we would need to define how that extension point works. And that's that's kind of really where we yeah. got, got. And if, if it's really like, no, we don't want to use SDF data for this, we really want to use an extension point, then we need to kind of take it to that next. So, um, you know, back to the proposal of using an SDF keyword at the top level for extension points and just using SDF to define them. But what again is, is, is there was there was a meta model uh, question there where you couldn't tell the meta model from the model. 
would that Im impact the processing or is that a more of a human readability problem? Well, you always can put things into comments if they are really only for the humans. Um, so okay. what, what we are trying to do here is to do something that actually could be used, uh, for instance, in an editor that allows us to, to generate and edit uh, yes. these these models. So the, the editor has to understand uh, what numbers it can accept for OMID in this place and in that place. That's right. Well, my editor, the, my, I have all of that in my prototype. You can go back and it's, it's all just a, a data property of one of the definitions, right? And in the same way, if you can follow the SDF pointers back to the range constraints, then then you have that part of the editor. The other part of the editor is you have to go and and look at all of the uh, candidate um, things that are already defined that you might want to just plug in. And so you have to know that the things that are of the right class to plug in. But that's a separate problem. The editor would be able to fetch the range constraints through any SDF pointer scheme, I think. I think the question is more whether the range constraints we have in the SDF language are appropriate for extension points. Like data qualities, for example, is that an appropriate range constraint for the kind of extension points we want to enable? And I'd say so far it is because I only wanted to put in definition like things. I want to extend SDF. I don't. I don't really want to change the schema. I just want to add SDF like things that aren't. Part of the official definition, but if we really want to change the schema, then we probably need something that's more sophisticated than just adding an SDF language range constraint at the extension point definition. Yeah, I think this this is good food for thought. Uh, mm. So I think the next step would be to take Ari's example and actually fill it in with uh, some. Uh, meta model uh, functionality, and uh, then we we could leave SDF data as it is, and instead uh, make sure that we have a way to define these extension points that allows us to to make um, to that gives us enough expressive power to define them in such a way that that an editor for the, the models would be able to. Uh, allow us defining the values. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I can update my prototype to use that pattern also. So um, it occurred to me, though, during the thinking about this, that if I if I put my extension points in the default namespace, I don't need the carries. That wouldn't so work if, well, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> well, isn't it true though? If you were in the OMA, if OMA was your default namespace, wouldn't that extension yeah. point just just route back to? So wh why is that a problem? Because, because quality names, quality, quality sorry, names yeah. don't come from the default namespace. Quality names come from the SDF definition. Yeah, so basically future uh, SDF spec so, might use your keyword. Yes. So if you put in, so, so if you just put in the same query you're using for the default namespace, that maybe won't work either then. Like it wouldn't be able to tell, we wouldn't be able to know what to do with a quality that had a prefix versus a definition. It wouldn't, well, maybe it would. Yeah. Huh. I, I think we can say like, Quality without query is from the SDF spec namespace, not from the default namespace. So, is it true that you can identify a quality and always know when one of these things is being defined an extension point? Uh, yeah, probably because you yeah. you're not okay. If the only difference would be if we had a way of defining, we 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 actually closed off the target namespace for definitions to go into. So that would be the only thing that would confuse the processor is if there was also a weight query 
to make your definition go into a different namespace. If we're not going to allow that, then when you saw a query, you could assume that it was an extension point, right? Does that make sense? Is that what you're thinking? I'm, I'm, I'm thinking like, yeah. Wait, that if you saw a query here, you would you could always assume that it was an extension, correctly assume that it was an extension point? Yeah, so um, you really have to be careful to to distinguish the two kinds of namespaces we have here. We have namespaces for named items. Named items are things like like SDF things, SDF objects, FDS, SDF properties, and so on. And th that's the space that is governed by the default namespace. And then we have uh, totally unrelated namespace for qualities. And if you use a curry in the place where you uh, normally would just have a quality name, uh, then apparently you, you are going into a, a different namespace and the default namespace for that is currently unnamed. So we, we don't have a name for the default quality namespace. We could call that SDF colon or something like that. Um, but uh, right now, if, if you want to um, define your own quality names, then going into the default namespace is not a good idea, as, as Ari said, because you, you might be using a name that SDF will be using in the future. So you're better off having a separate namespace for your extension qualities. Right. And so you would probably want to use a different query also, even though it would be, a, even though if you use the same query, it would still be a different namespace. You might want to use like OCI for the DNA, the OCI for the extension or something like that. Um, I mean, um, <laughs> IPX or something, you know, whatever. I make up a different query for it, probably. But um, yeah, we haven't designed any of that. No. Do we? I, so I, does it seem like? Does it seem like to everyone that that what you should get at the tar, at the uh, when you resolve one of these extension points that you should get data qualities? Does that make sense to? Or do we need more? Well, you if you resolve the quality, you get data, but then you have a meta model on top of that that yeah. tells you what those data are supposed to be. Yeah. And can we reuse the SDF meta model for the extension points, or do we have to create a a way of defining a schema extension at the extension point? Uh, I, th I think that depends on what level of expressive power we actually need here. Mm -hmm. So as long as we are just doing things like OMA IDs, um, I think we, we are fine with just defining uh, data and their, um, in the meta model, their, their data qualities. But if the, the extension point actually is about defining uh, data qualities, and not about defining data, then we have to ratchet the the meta uh, tool one one level further. Could we think about an extension point mechanism that we can create a bounded definition for now? That um, that will that doesn't exclude any known use cases. In other words, if we decide that. The extension point we designed today only needs to point to data qualities. Does that does that break any use cases anyone has? Is that sufficient? So, my when you say think, yeah, yeah, go ahead. When you say data qualities, um, do you mean like like in the, in the example? I I'm not using all my all my ID in two different places. I'm using it as a quality for an object. I'm using it as a quality for a specific affordance. 
I guess only the latter is what you would call a data quality, not the former. No, no, what I mean is that the expressive power of the constraint that your extension point points to. In other words, you're defining a name and that name points somewhere and then you're gonna have a value that you put in, in place of that name at some point in the processing or substitute a value. Is the, is what we have in SDF for data qualities, in other words, the, the that piece of JSON schema that talks about you know, what, what values, what simple values look like, I guess it could be objects and arrays also. Right? So you have quite a lot there, but it's all, it's all just sort of defining values and, and, and data. I guess I don't get my hope I'm saying that right. Okay. So for, for these strength, like OMA ID, I would not be pointing to any SDF definitions. I mean, I wouldn't be using SDF to define their constraints because i think there would be well, qualities in a similar yeah. way that you know label is always a string in the same way i would say you know oma id is always a number so I, I there would be a you know kind of a static specification you know like on a cddl you know well not an, maybe not an rfc if it's an oma thing but you know oma spec giving a cddl that hey here is what how we extend extend the sdf cddl to support these things. That's okay. how I envisioned it working. Okay. Here. Okay. But this is really not much different. If you if you say that what you want to have is a number here, then you could use the data qualities constraints. It's the same as CDDL. It's gonna be it's gonna be this it's it's a subset. So it, it's a subset of JSON schema and a subset of C, CDDL. Which which say that um, it can be an integer or a string or a boolean or an object or an array mm -hmm. or a null. Sure. Or and it can sure. have you know it can have all these other things like it can define some a constant or it can define defaults. So you can mm -hmm. do all that with with what I'm calling the data qualities definition that mm -hmm. we already have. So mm -hmm. it seems like we don't need to escape all the way out to defining a new fundamental schema fragment for these extensions if the use cases only really need to talk about schema schema constrained value types like what you can constrain with with json schema about values you know you don't get to have a whole schema there with um um you know dollar refs and everything like that yeah and, and descriptions yeah. and all that but you get the data qualities part. So what what we did in SDF schema, we we created this this item called data qualities, and it's a set of constraints that you can sort of use as a, a reusable piece. <clears throat> you can even use it in your code, right? If I'd like to figure out a formal way to export these to you know C plus plus or or Haskell or something like that, right? Just to serve as a a template for a, an object you're making in code as well. So that's you know. But the point is that I think there's enough expressive power in what we have defined already as data qualities constraint that that would be sufficient for a, a, a very useful class of extension points that would cover, I think, all the use cases I can think of right now. I, I, I agree. I agree. Actually, but, but the, the use case I had in mind. Um, mainly was that like I could get a like now I have the JSON schema of what you know a valid SDF file looks like and I can put it in my editor and you know have it uh, you know checked on on the fly and have suggestions and everything. I would like to do the same thing with the OMA IDs. With the so I would e point. anyway eventually yeah. yeah anyway would need to have those in the same you know JSON schema so in the same yeah. CDDL that would turn into JSON schema. Well, so well, it's true. Yeah. I, yeah, it's true. I could use the SDF data, but then I would have to turn those into JSON schema and then do the merging. So, well, yeah, it's... yeah, I see. So you would like the t our tools to do the merging of the JSON schema for you so that you could just get a get a, a, yeah. a sort of a merge schema that then you plug into the editor. And and yeah. and if we just say data qualities, well, you can plug that into the editor still. But we're not giving you a an automatic way of doing that. I guess you'd have to you'd have to um, your editor would have to 
you'd have to do that. You'd have to merge the schema offline. You'd have to take the data qualities part of the schema and the name that was defined and, and plug that in. It wouldn't be super hard to do it, but I, I see what your point is that we could think of a way to make that um, more, you know, use a common pattern and more standardized and easier for people to, to use. So, so essentially you want those constraints, you want it to look like part of the language so that you can use editors and these other tools that see it all. And that's, I, yeah, that's, we should definitely not make that too hard to do. Yeah. And I, and I, and I, I you have a piece. prototype of doing this already that where you, where you've sort of got some of these pieces? Uh, not, 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 not yet. I mean, the, the example was one of the things I was going to do pretty so early far. on with my, my thing. Maybe, maybe I'll up the priority of that and, and try that. But I think that any of these, okay. So, so if we had a way of extending the schema that, so would that be in the tool chain also then? So the tool chain would have to pick up those schema extensions to process the files. That's what you're really talking about is being able to, to, to do it at that level. So that introduces additional work to do the tool chain integration of those things that wouldn't be required if you were doing it through uh, reusing the, the uh, you know, SPF mechanism. Mm -hmm. But then there's extra work in merging it back in to, to have an external schema that, that has all these. Actually, it wouldn't, yeah. wait a minute, wouldn't the schema, if you had a schema driven editor, now I, I wanted to test this because I think that I was thinking about this yesterday. If you fed a schema driven editor, a schema that, and uh, you have to feed it the definition. Okay, right. You have to feed it, not just the schema, but okay. Let's say I have two different, <laughs> I don't want to waste a lot of time, so just stop me if you have things waiting. We're not going to get where we need to. But if you had two different yeah. application definitions, like I had SD, I have two different uh, actually, Michael, objects, right? Michael, if I have yeah, two different sorry, no, objects defined, I want my editor to know about those <laughs> objects as well. Right? Yeah. If I, I want my uh, editor to say, oh, I, I'm making a, an analog input object. And I want my editor to sort of give me values for that analog input object. So if it can do that, it seems like it could do things for like a custom field as well. Mm. But yeah. I wanted to so test that we, anyway. Yeah. So, so, so Michael, should we try to kind of wrap this up? We have five more. Yeah. Minutes. Uh, okay, five more minutes. Yeah. And and uh, I mean, this is how we get something out of this discussion here. I'm, well, I'm I mean, we're getting, I yeah. we're getting pretty close. Yeah. We're getting pretty close. Okay. Good. I, I think Ari, you were trying to say something. Yeah, Ari, Ari, please go ahead. Yeah, I, I was about to say, say the same thing. We have only five minutes. We should uh, wrap up here um, and maybe think about the next steps briefly. Um, but I, but I think the well, so maybe, maybe, maybe the, the next step to kind of see like those those two options is like how would it look like as a I don't know, Karsten, you have the right names for it, like a CDDL fragment that you would be able to. You know, define that they could easily merge. I suppose CDDL kind of processing and language has this kind of functionality. And then the other alternative would be to use the SDF data style or definition SDF and see how they look like. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we could actually use this doc that I shared because this is exactly about namespace extensions. So I think this is actually a right place to. You know, the the IETF uh, hedge doc document that I shared. Um, we could write stuff there and see how it looks like. But I think the key thing for the upcoming RFC, we don't luckily have to have this design ready. This is for oh. uh, you know and future extensions. The key thing is that if we want to uh, ex exclude, I mean, to be future proof, we want to exclude something that looks like a query uh, in a quality names. Uh, for, you know, the SDF qualities that are in the future specs, then I think we should put it probably in the spec now. Yes. Uh, and I guess like the question reserve, is... That, reserve the yeah, basically, construct, but don't yeah, fully define it. Sled for. Yeah, so don't put columns into names. Unless you know what you're doing.
So basically that would be our, our extension point for, for doing something like this, that we can design the details later. Is there any additional, but okay, this is just, this is, a, well, maybe you don't see my marking here, but this is a simple rule. Is there anything else that needs to be added right now? At this point? Yes, a new date. When do we meet next? next meeting? Yes. <laughs> oh, um, so we are getting close to Easter. How about next week, same time? Yep. Next Wednesday or next, yep. next, uh, uh, yeah, on the sixth, because then is the Easter. Otherwise yeah. it's, it's three weeks. Cause I think we have a bunch of PRs to discuss and, um, okay. So, take all, so Wednesday all sixth. okay. No, that's that's okay. I mean, I mean, hopefully I get it right with the DST that time. Uh, <laughs> it's it's hard. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, so talk to you all in a week. Can can we can can uh, <laughs> Arik or or somebody? Can you write up uh, the the summary of of the kind of the outcome of this long discussion? Uh, so we can um, start from something. Yeah, I, I said, yeah, we'll, we'll make an example of the CDDL fragment style and the uh, SDF extension slash data quality style in the same, in the document that I shared. Yeah. Uh, I will have a look at them next time. Um, yes. And I guess, and, and, and then, yeah, meanwhile, I guess, I guess the right way to, for the RFC is we just do exactly what it says in the slide here. Don't put columns. Um, I guess we need a, need a PR for that. And think about if that's all we need mm -hmm. until next time. I have one homework item for the next time. How do we call the thing that now becomes RFC? Is that SCF 1.2 or do we give it a different name? Not for discussing now, but uh, please have an opinion when we meet next time. SDF RFC. They call it the SDF RFC? Yes, exactly. No. Don't use one that we already called an implement that we had an implementation draft for. That's the only that would be the only issue. If we uh, if yeah. we said we had an implementation draft of one point one, let's not use one point one again. Yeah. So that would uh, argue for one point two. Okay. Cool. Cool. Talk okay. to you next week. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Bye. Talk to you soon. Bye. 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 Bye.